This is your Adventist News, a service of the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. I'm Adriel Hepburn. Coming up in this week's broadcast, new officers elected in the Cayman Island Conference, 114 youth receive awards, and Pathfinders invested on the island of Andrus. These stories and more on this week's Adventist News. Thanks for joining us for this week's Adventist News. The Cayman Islands Conference of Seventh-day Adventists held its fifth quadrennial session on December 8th and 9th under the theme Enduring Hope at the Georgetown Church in Grand Cayman. The keynote speaker for the opening night was Dr. Gamaliel Flores, Education Director of the Inter-American Division of Seventh-day Adventists and representative of the President of the IAD at the session. In his message to the delegates and guests, Dr. Flores presented the life of Joshua, reminding everyone present that each of them is a leader and that God expects them to lead with integrity and with the spirit of service. Leaders are the first to serve and the last to be served, said Dr. Flores. The sessions began on a spiritual high and as the meetings progressed to the final day of the session where three officers of the Cayman Islands Conference were elected. Pastor Peter Carr, President of the Atlantic Caribbean Union, served as Chairman of the Organizing and Nominating Committees. And at the end of the day, the officers named were Pastor Rinaldo Drackett, President, Pastor Andrew Campbell, Executive Secretary, and Elder John Wesley, Treasurer. Pastor Ronaldo Drackett, President of the Cayman Islands Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, in his charge, encouraged millennials to get involved in some area of church ministry. He admonished them to make God a part of their lives, encouraging them to download the Bible on their smartphones so it would be handy to them to read and study the Word of God. He said that in its pages there is life, and when the Word of God is read, the hand of God will move in the Cayman Island Conference. This year, 2019, the church celebrates 125 years of Adventism in the Cayman Islands, and the leaders and members are proud to see how the church has grown to 16 churches and one company with over 6,400 members. The Youth Department of the South Palmas Conference held an Adventist Youth Awards on December 15th at the Breezes Hotel and Resort under the theme Pure Royalty. 114 youth received medals for their contributions in leadership, community outreach, service, and mentorship in their local churches. Uh, the Adventist Youth Awards 2019 is about inspiring local churches um, for service and empowerment of our youth and passing it on by equipping, engaging, and empowering our youth for service. And so the, the, the twist to Adventist Youth Awards 2019 is that we are recognizing churches and the youth in local churches who have been following that initiative. Um, we plan to do it um, this way for uh, the final time and we'll see how the response is um, as we look forward for the future. The purpose of the awards was to affirm the commitment of the young people. There was a special performance by Carl Scavella III of the Bethany Church that sang an original song and Sir Willard Barr of the Grandstown Church who presented an original spoken word piece. They both represented unique forms of ministry that our young people are engaging in and were presented with awards for their creativity and ministry. The Youth Department expresses gratitude to all youth leaders and Pathfinder directors for their dedication and service to the youth of our conference in 2019. The Family Island Awards will take place in 2020. Also last week, five Master Guides and three Pathfinders were invested in a joint service on the island of Andrus and empowered for service. Members and community guests filled the Blessed Hope Church to witness their loved ones receive their class pins and honors. Patrick Wilson Jr., Assistant Youth Director for the South Palmas Conference, charged the investees from South and Mangrove Key Andrus to live up to the ideals of the organization based on Romans 12.1 and encouraged the parents present to allow their kids to become pathfinders. Commendations are given to Elder Marvel Farquharson, Master Guide Coordinator on the island, Director Singh of Mangrove Key, and Sunil Durant, Director for South Andrus, on a job well done. Congratulations are also extended to the District Pastor, Korean Black, and his wife Carissa for the achievement of these young people and their involvement in the Pathfinder Club. Last week, Bahamas Academy held its annual Christmas production under the theme, A Star is Born. This event took place on the school grounds and began with the senior class of 2020 lighting the path for all the evening's participants to follow. Teachers, parents, and family members saturated the school's quadrangle as they listened to the heartwarming musical selections from the students. The Magical Night highlighted the acting ability of the students who portrayed the story of the birth of Jesus in a modern time. The administration, teachers, students, and staff wished the audience a Merry Christmas, and they look forward with anticipation to the new year. Stay tuned, we'll have the upcoming events in our conference after this short break. 
Convention 2020 is fast approaching under the caption, Christ, our soon coming King. Our guest speaker will be Pastor Deb Blair Snell from First Seventh-day Adventist Church in Huntsville, Alabama, who will present the Word of God at the William Thompson Auditorium on Jean Street from January 10 to 12, 2020. Meetings begin at 7 p.m. on Friday, January 10, January 11th at 9 a.m. and later in the afternoon at 4. On January 12th, there will be a constituency meeting at 8 a.m. Our kids were definitely not left out this time at convention. Under the theme God's Amazing Grace, our children will be in an interactive Sabbath school and divine service on January 11th, 2020 at the Maranatha Seventh-day Adventist Church. Get ready for this powerful, all-inclusive worship experience as we look to the soon coming of our Lord and King. Welcome back to Adventist News. Coming up in the South Bahamas Conference, the South Bahamas Conference will be in convention during January 10th through 12th, 2020 under the theme, Christ, our soon coming King. Our guest speaker will be Pastor Devlin R. Snell of the First Church in Huntsville, Alabama. It will be a time of fellowship and upliftment as we bring in the new year in worship. Prepare now to be a part of what will be an awesome worship experience. You are encouraged to start the new year on a healthy foot by joining the Health Ministries Department of the South Bahamas Conference in its annual Fun Run Walk on January 10th, 2020 at 6 a.m. The fun will begin at Arawaki and there are a number of options for you, so get moving in the 5K or the 10K event. And after you've completed the walk, there will be free fruit and water to refresh you. Also, the annual 8 Weeks to Wellness program will be held from February 3rd through March 20th, 2020 at the New Providence Seventh-day Adventist Church on Soldier Road. The sessions will be every Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. This coming Sabbath, which is referred to as Christmas Sabbath in many of our Seventh-day Adventist churches in Nassau and the Family Islands, will be celebrated with musicals and lots of fellowship. So, if you are looking for somewhere to worship this weekend, be sure to visit any one of our churches where you will experience the joy that only can come from knowing Jesus Christ. To get more information about our churches, upcoming events, and more, visit our conference website at southbombersconference.org where you can view the news as well as various programming, read the weekly logos, or please feel free to call our headquarters at 242-341-4021. a gem from the Philadelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church. And this is your tip for today. The teenage years are a period of intense physical, emotional, and mental intellectual growth. It's also a time when your child develops habits that can last a lifetime. You can help your teenager reach optimal growth and development by instilling lifestyle habits that support a healthy and happy body. Eat your fruits and veggies. It is recommended that teens get at least five servings of fruits and vegetables each day. Fruits and vegetables provide important vitamins and minerals your teen body needs to grow and function properly. Get moving. Exercise does more than burn calories. Engaging in physical activity helps keep the heart and lungs strong and produces endorphins, which are chemicals that improve mood. Watch what you drink. Your body is almost two-thirds of water, so staying hydrated is most important. Teenagers should aim to drink six to eight glasses of water per day. The number increases for teens who engage in sports and are especially active. Other good sources of fluids include 100% fruit juice and low-fat milk. Sugary and caffeinated beverages should be eliminated from the diet completely as they provide excess sugar and empty calories. If you don't snooze, you lose. Teenagers need at least 9 hours of sleep each night to function at their best during the day. It sounds easy enough, but with early morning start, late afternoon practices, and hours of homework, getting enough sleep can be a challenge. Set a regular bedtime that allows for nine hours of sleep before your teen has to get up for school. Your teen should also engage in at least an hour of quiet time prior to bedtime. The goal is for all electronics to be turned off at night so that the brain and body can relax. Remember 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. I am Chelsea Gibson, and this has been your health tip courtesy of the Adventist Television. Remember, God wants us to prosper and be in good health.
We go now to our news feature from around the world with the Adventist News Network. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, the United States government's top Supreme Court lawyer, Noel Francisco, has recommended the court hear a case with potentially far-reaching implications for Sabbath keepers in the workplace. Francisco, the U.S. Solicitor General, filed the brief on December 9 in a case brought by Seventh-day Adventist Church member Daryl Patterson against the national pharmacy chain Walgreens. Francisco, whose brief came in response to a request from the Supreme Court for his advice, suggested that Patterson's case did indeed pose an important religious freedom exercise question for the court to consider. In the five years since this lawsuit began, Patterson has been represented by Associate General Counsel at the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, Todd McFarland. The suit was filed after Patterson was fired by Walgreens for failing to conduct a two-hour training session on Saturday. Saturday is the day Seventh-day Adventists observe as Sabbath. A central legal question in the case is how far an employer must go in order to accommodate the religious practices of the employees. The U.S. Circuit Court of the Appeals for the 11th Circuit ruled against Patterson, holding that if a religious practice poses anything more than a de minimis or nominal burden on the employer, accommodation is not required by law. According to McFarland, it is true that secular businesses do not have to accommodate an employee's religious beliefs under all circumstances. But when it comes to religious practice in the workplace, Congress has attempted to strike a balance between the needs of businesses and the needs of employees by saying the employer must accommodate unless it causes an undue hardship. It is the interpretation of these two words, undue hardship, that lies at the heart of Patterson's case. McFarland says of the case, no employee should be required to subjugate their beliefs, their needs, their faith to the employer's mere corporate convenience. McFarland also said he hopes the Supreme Court will announce its decision in early January regarding whether or not it will take up Mr. Patterson's case. We will keep you updated as the case progresses. That brings us to the end of our Adventist News from South Bahamas Conference of Seventh day Adventists. Please feel free to share what is happening at your church by sending us your news stories and upcoming events. Feel free to email them to sbcadventistnews at gmail.com or call our media department at 242-341-4021. To view a rebroadcast of the Adventist News along with other programming, or to keep in touch with what's happening in our conference, please visit and subscribe to the conference website, southbombersconference.org, our YouTube channel, and our Facebook page. I'm Adriel Hepburn, and on behalf of our production team of Adventist Television Channel 658, have a happy Sabbath, a Merry Christmas, and be sure to spread some love and joy with your fellow men during this Yuletide season.